I still remember the day Timothy Ferris came into a, a tweet house at the Consumer Electronics Show and, uh, and uh, uh, made friends with me and sold his first book to me. Um, he told me that he wrote uh, up on a whiteboard the people that he wanted to meet. Well, if you're recruiting, it's sort of the same kind of process, but uh, there's a lot more moving parts to it than just putting a name on a whiteboard. You want to keep track of a lot of data. And we're going to hear uh, from Archively right now uh, talking about uh, uh, their tool, but how to use it to effectively recruit or do research on people and, uh, 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 and work better with them. Who are you? Hi, Robert. Um, I'm Perry Gorman. I'm the CEO and founder of Archively. And uh, I come from a long background of executive search, uh, over 13 years before getting into startups. I did Unroll Me, yeah. which uh, just was acquired by Slice. Yeah. And, uh, that's how we met. Uh, that's you, how we met. We were we at met. a startup grind event, if I remember right. I, no, I think it was you talking at General Assembly. Ah. Right, but then I waited. Ah. And I talked to you some more <laughs> until we did the the startup. We were both moderating. Yeah. So uh, uh, you help uh, companies find talent, right? So I help companies. I help companies organize and give them a place to put their people research. It's a kind of a new. Well, that's what you do with archive, of, like, Yeah. But your previous oh, career previously, was yeah, trying so, to find talent. Right? Oh yeah, I mean beyond, right? I did, I did probably, I, I did pretty hardcore executive search on Wall Street. So recruiting traders and salespeople, and um, you know people that still don't have their backgrounds online. Um, we did a lot of, uh, I did a lot of, let's just say pretty hardcore sourcing when I first started, and then uh, the kind of recruiting that I did. I mean, I recruited people who, you know, there were only twenty people in the world that did a particular job. So, you know, it's not your dynamite fishing kind of recruiting, like highly targeted, very tactical. And, um, and how did you uh, keep track of all these people? Did, did you put them in a spreadsheet? Did you, uh, did you have a little database? And what led to the development of uh, So Archive? back in the day, uh, you know, I started in the late 90s and this was when job boards were just kind of emerging. But the people that we recruited weren't on job boards. And so a lot of how we started was just pulling people out of directories and we made paper org charts and you were basically keeping the names of people in a contact database. But because it was so hard to find a person that a person even existed, you certainly weren't going to just spam them, right? You had to really work to make sure that you were engaging with them appropriately and doing a lot of research and, and that was your job. Um, what I noticed, and this is kind of the, where Archively came from, um, first of all, those best practices of researching people and um, understanding them before reaching out to engage with them is the practice that I actually apply to everything, right? So it's the same way that I would talk to investors, it's the same way that I would talk to uh, recruiting candidates or talk to my customers, et cetera. So it's, it's sort of a practice. And the way things are today is that there's so much data. I mean, it's at your fingertips. If I had had the data that's online now and 10 years ago, it would have been a much different situation. Um, but now I think the question is, well, you have all of this data and <clears throat> are you using it properly? And are you really looking at who people are as opposed to just using the fact that everything is fast and easy to contact a thousand people at the same time. Uh, most of it is uh, not very well targeted, not well thought out, uh, and it isn't uh, welcome even, right? Right, and, and it's sort of like people have that, that conversion mentality. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, if I send a thousand emails to C-level people and nine of them respond, I got this kind of you know, conversion rate. And, and unfortunately, with people, that, that, that's not a good application when you're dealing with recruiting or business development or things that need to be strategic. And so if you're gonna do this work, I mean, the way that people actually keep this information now is painful. Uh, they, they use spreadsheets, if that. And if you've ever tried to like pass on a spreadsheet to someone else, um, 
it's pretty much a joke. Yeah. And uh, organizations um, like recruiting firms are using this technology that's like 15 years old. Yeah. And like a lot of it's um, custom, you know, they've got a lot of issues with their data kind of being stuck in it. But at least they are keeping the information that they've been researching for a long time. When I, um, like I've actually had the experience of having records on people for over a decade. Wow. And so like I don't think many people out there have actually had that kind of information. Now, <clears throat> most people think, oh, uh, uh, recruiting, all I need is LinkedIn for this. Uh, and, and maybe we should see your tool and understand what it lets you do that LinkedIn doesn't let you do and, and why you would want to uh, think about a, it in a deeper way than just, uh, oh, I'm going to go and look for a software engineer sure. on LinkedIn. Well, and by the way, LinkedIn is really important. LinkedIn is an incredible resource and it's a source of data. And sure, they have recruiter products and things like that that, that do let you do workflowing and whatnot. But uh, the truth is that there is a whole universe of people out there that are not on LinkedIn. Um, they're on other sites. And I think that the way the next 10 years is going to look is that there are only going to be more sources of data where people are showing up professionally. Yep. And the question is, where do you put that? And how do Jobs you keep that? Jobs are changing, that? too. There's sure. people now who are paid just to be on Instagram, right? <laughs> what I a, want that job. What a job. <laughs> they're, they're out there. They're out there. I can help you find some of those. Um, so uh, first of all, how, how do, I pay, do I pay for this? Is this a free service? So we have uh, a freemium. Archively? We have a okay. freemium product. And, and the reason that is is because I really don't want best practices to be behind a $10,000 paywall. Yeah. I think everyone should have access to doing things the right way. Yep. Yeah. And, and this is, you know, this is how I do it. This is what I'm good at. And <laughs> so to, to get started, I can uh, start, try this for free. Yeah, just log okay. on archively.com and, and, and log in. So I, I set up an account already um, to, to demo for you. Give me a tour around it. Explain what I'm seeing. Okay. Uh, so we never used a recruiting tool before. Well, so. it, it, think of it as like Evernote or Pinterest for people. Yep. Um, it, it feels like that. It feels like you can clip a page about anyone from anywhere on the web. Okay, so let's just take, I'm just gonna go to AngelList for a second. All right. And let's say we are recruiting and we're looking for candidates on AngelList and I'm just gonna like just pull someone up just to show you. So let's say we have this guy, sorry if I'm showing your information online. <laughs> but um, so all, all AngelList is fairly public. All so. I would have to do is, um, uh, click the bookmark list. So you found somebody you're interested in uh, researching more you click the bookmarklet and it adds uh, and it adds Jason into so it adds archively. him to archively with one click. It just pulled like all of the other pages that were associated with his Angelus profile in there, and I can go and add a resume. I can add contact details if I find it later. We don't add email addresses. That's so like for people that think that we're like an aggregator or a contact finder, we we aren't. We're not a search engine. We are a repository more like a sourcing CRM. Um, part of the reason that is as well is that I think there's a really fine line between having automation that actually helps you do your job and automation that begins to Im impede you from being good at what you do. Got and it. so we're trying to walk, walk So the automation line. is you found uh, so other... So we're, we're scraping links, yeah. right? Like we're pulling links in so that you quickly have this profile that you can now work with from a, you know, a contact database perspective. Um, can I add more if oh, I know yeah. that guy's Facebook page or his LinkedIn page? Can I add those you, in? You can add anything okay. you, and also from any site. So it doesn't have to be a social site. Let's say you find an article he was mentioned in in the New York Times. You could clip that. You could clip video. You could uh, clip information about a company that he worked at. Whatever it is that you need to do to customize his dossier, so to speak, um, is, is how you would organize that for yourself right now a lot of people are pitching me always ask me how do I meet you how do I show you something how do I get in front of you how do I get on your calendar right that's uh, three separate sure. layers can you can you do a search for events that I might be speaking at or like I'm going to the consumer electronics show and I've written about that on Twitter and I've written about that on Facebook and I've uh, written about that on Google Plus can you uh, can you see that automatically one or uh, can I just add it manually you can add any of that right okay. and what's relevant to one person is not necessarily relevant to what's another what right. is relevant to another person which is another reason why it's about curation we do add some automation to make it easier but the idea is for people 
to do the work yeah. so that they can actually engage properly. Okay. Um, can you use my profile to email me or to uh, Facebook message me to start a, a conversation with me? We, we link back to all of the sites. So I'm not talking about link, uh, linking back. Uh, no, obviously you can we don't have over. messaging inside of the, inside of the product. You can, if, we, if so you have your email address, yes, it'll just open up your email. Got but it. it's not like, we don't have a messaging platform. Okay. Um, the, so this is a, a great platform to build a dossier on somebody to help you understand who they are and share that maybe with other people that you're working with and trying to convince them, hey, we should really hire uh, this girl because she's gonna, she's a rock star and this is what she does, right? Is that sort of what you're going sort down? Sort of, with? but that kind of take it to another level of, of more about, um, okay, so you're, you're trying to recruit data scientists and the data scientists that you want are not, uh, they're, they're not applying for jobs, they're not responding to your job ads. Somebody inside of your company or an external recruiter is going to have to go out and figure out who are the data scientists that you should be recruiting, what, you know, what have they worked on, maybe people inside of our company know them, like let's strategize about this, let's yeah. pull together a collection, like and this is where it kind of gets into the team piece and, and grouping of people, um, let's pull together a collection, go out and research data scientists, and then strategize about how we're going to approach and get to these people. Here's how I would approach that. Uh, I would start with the data scientist that I did know, Hillary Rosen, for instance. She sure. was the data scientist at Bitly, right? Yep. Um, she now is working at an investment firm, so she's probably unhirable because she wants to start her own company. That's where, what she's going through, so I know a little bit about her. but. Uh, she's been on panels of other data scientists, so I would, I would. That's how I would approach it. Does that sound sane? And and does the tool help you start seeing patterns like, oh, she spoke at South by Southwest on a data science, data science panel, and there was four other people on that data science panel. So the way the product works is about companies building collections and storing data for for the long term. It's not it, like the, the things that you're asking, like that's not, that's not uh, it's not going out and finding all that automatic information. Okay. But, but you can manually enter, you can manually like enter if I found anything. out she spoke at South by Southwest, I could grab that uh, panel description and put it into Archively? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, and, and really where it starts to get um, interesting, and maybe I'll just open up my- Because back account. to how I pitched you, Tim Ferriss did that, right? He wrote on a whiteboard, he started out with a couple bloggers he knew, and he started sure. looking at what other bloggers should he contact to, to uh, sell his book. Exactly, and the fact that he was doing that on a whiteboard, now imagine an organization that has 50 recruiters, yeah. and has engineering teams that are really large. They're going into whiteboarding rooms, hiring managers have spreadsheets, and recruiters have their own processes. A lot of the platforms that recruiters are using are behind you know, the HR wall. Yeah. Um, and so when you start to be able to save and store this online data that will um, continue to live, basically, right? Because yep. you know, I can click on these profiles a year from now and they're still relevant. Yeah, you're gonna need data scientists a year from now, even if you hire well, one, you're ne gonna need another one, right? And most companies actually work on recs multiple times, and if you ask them, like, who were the top three candidates that didn't get hired, they actually don't know. Like, there's a whole, hmm. they're, they're, the way that ATS business is, is kind of set up is, is, is not um, ideal for keeping track of, of talent, really. Yeah. It's good for processing talent, it's not good for keeping track of talent, and so, I made this for you. Yeah. Um, this is basically, I'll just show it to you like so it looks pretty. This is a collection of people who you follow on Facebook. Yeah. And so we just, you know, we grabbed profiles on these people and, um, and pulled it together because sure, you can follow their posts and on Facebook. And these are entrepreneurs, people have started companies. Yeah, or... so this is, this is your list. Yeah. And we, we pulled it together for you, similar to what we did for Product Hunt last week, which is, you know, pulling together the top 100 most followed people on Product Hunt. Um, this is the kind of stuff that helps um, people and companies start to really learn about who people are. Yeah. It's not just like automated list making, it's, it's research. But once you've done it, you have a layer and then you can build on top of that. All and right, I can I, share this with you. So I, I can share this with you and then we could collaborate around it as great. well. Great, I, I, I get the dossier part and the collection and, and learning about people and, and keeping track of where they've spoken or who, 
who who's in their network because sure. that's really important, right? If I'm trying to get to you, maybe I don't call you directly. Maybe I ask first of all your friends around you. How do I get to her? How do I, uh, you know, really impress her and stand it and stand out, right? And if, I think that's if, one. If, if but Mark that's, Andreessen, but that's you, right? If Mark like, Andreessen calls me and says I should pay attention to you, I'm going to pay more attention to you than if you called me directly, right? Let's just be honest about it. This is a okay. investment works this way. Journalism that sure. works this way. Uh, planning parties works this way, right? On and on. But the thing is, that is um, for companies when they're doing recruiting, their um, that referral network and referrals are still the highest. Uh, success rate for hiring for of companies um, when you uh, people max out their referral networks mm -hmm. right there is a point at which you actually need to recruit outside your network and and that is where companies really have a problem okay. and so what you need to continue to do is do this research so that you are expanding on what is the talent pool that's actually available not the one that's just applying for jobs but who's out there, and how do we as a company create a strategy to research them, strategize how to get to them, and then, and then engage them in a way where we create a relationship with them as a company. Now, do, uh, uh, Does that make sense? Yeah, it's the third one that I haven't heard much yet about. Uh, let's say I have you as a candidate to come and work at Rackspace, right? And I'm using your tool to, get, to okay. recruit you. Um, Let's say I get you in for an interview uh, somehow. Okay. <laughs> That'll take some skill. <laughs> is there a way to track the pipeline of people that I'm having come in and interview? So, is, that, is this a pipeline tool so like that? So it's a pre-pipeline tool. So okay. we're not an ATS. An ATS is a compliance product. What is ATS? A applicant tracking system. Okay, got So it. just like to get into like some, some legalese, you know, applicant tracking system is when someone actually fully um, uh, applies for a position yeah. you have to legally track the communication that your company has with them and so therefore there's like there the ATS's that exist are there for compliance reasons yeah. to make sure that you haven't done anything discriminatory if you got audited etc what we are is what I would say a pre pipelining tool so when you are strategizing about um, who you want to approach and how you would approach them this is how you would do that so we have to wrap up yeah. uh, tell me a little bit about your company uh, uh, are you funded? Are you pre-funding? What, what are you? We've had angel uh, angel funding, and I bootstrapped for a while. Um, you know, I have a really clear vision of what I want to do, and um, I also wanted to get to a point where, like, we had really solid revenue. We just released our team version, which we're paying, uh, which is paying, and we have customers signing up now, um, just a month ago. So I wanted to get enough traction for that before we really like went out and raised serious money mm -hmm. but um all's looking good and um it's exciting i mean i love doing it and um i love seeing my users get um real value yeah. when when you talk about like when you see what um when companies buy like crms and and kind of products like this in general like the success rate of the projects is actually really low you know, a lot of these products were built for the buyer, not the user. And um, especially in, in the whole recruiting HR tech space, you're talking about like monster systems that, that are sold at like this CIO level and like the C-suite level where the users are like, I hate using this every day. So the first idea with this was, this is the first level of data collection and, and just um, workflow that is gonna help you be successful. Yeah. You mentioned the team version. What what are the features in the team, team version? And maybe team is you can collaboration. Show me. So like this is what I'm showing you this right now. Like this yep. is this is um, a group of candidates um, that were researched and were shared with a team. Um, none so of, let's say I'm your team not, member. No one had been called. These are not applicants. These are people they're targeting. Let's say I'm your team member. What would I see on my screen? You uh, would see the same thing okay. in this in within this workspace, um, and then you would be able to see and click on all the information and collaborate so you would be able to add to it you would be able to leave notes we would have the record of the whole project that we worked on together regarding this search so if I so, know Ryan Larkin for instance right. I could I could add information about him that might help you uh, recruit him because I might know his best friend I might know a yeah, previous boss right. right exactly so imagine imagine that you have a sourcing team and a recruiter and a recruiting manager and a hiring manager and maybe a couple of like interviewing engineers all sharing a workspace. 
So before anyone gets called or emailed, the entire team can say, oh, you know what, these guys went to MIT, so did this engineer, why don't you tell us what you think of him, did he take good, did he work with good professors, et cetera, and what is the feedback, do you actually even want to approach this guy? And that is actually how, well, that's how executive search does it. Yeah. So why not bring that to the rest of the world? Yeah. And it's simple, it's just meant to be, it's meant to be simple. Very cool. Thanks for bringing it in. Where do we find it? Archively.com. And it's a web, it's a web uh, service, it's web, right? Yeah. So it's not, not yet a mobile app or it, anything. It, it, I... it has some mobile functionality, to be honest, but I would say 1% of people try and use it on mobile. Like, we had this conversation, too. I know my users. Yeah. The desktop. It's the desktop thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming in.